I'm Charlotte Gray, and I've written The Massey Murder, A Maid, Her Master, and The Trial That Shocked a Country. In the early 20th century, the Masses were one of the most important families in Toronto and in Canada. The name was known right across the country because Massey, for Massey Manufacturing Company and then the Mar Massey Harris Manufacturing Company was the largest manufacturer of agricultural implements in the British Empire. And there were Massey tractors, Massey harvesters, Massey threshers in right across the prairies. They were incredibly important and probably provided, I should think, the majority of all the agricultural implements in what had come to be called the wheat basket of, of the empire. Canada fed the empire and Massey threshers dealt with all that wheat. So we have the Massey family, which is incredibly establishment, incredibly wealthy, incredibly um, sort of revered within, within Toronto itself and known right across Canada. But there was this other branch of the Masses, the other branch which had actually been disowned because uh, the eldest son of Hart Massey had died and Charlie Massey, and uh, Hart Massey had not wanted to uh, spread the ownership of his family company through what could potentially be a, uh, an in-law who was not related by blood. So he had cut off his uh, daughter-in-law and his grandchildren from the Massey inheritance. And Bert Massey, therefore, was part of this other branch, the not wealthy Masses, who had, uh, they had the name, they had the reputation, but they didn't have the money. Bert Massey, who was killed, uh, had to deal with all the Toronto's sort of feelings about his powerful and ungenerous family without actually enjoying any of the benefits. Bert Massey didn't have much money. He didn't work in the family company. He was a salesman for uh, cars. Um, he liked Flash. When he was shot down, the newspapers all recorded the fact that he was, had a diamond stick pin, but he, um, he didn't have enough money to do, uh, do the repairs to his house or even to live in a house that was anything like as grand as his wealthier relatives. Housemaids in 1915 were often known as skivvy, skivvies, because they did so much sort of really sort of dreary work. They had, were responsible in a house for all the cleaning, lighting fires, cleaning fires, and this is, of course, uh, pre-electricity pre in most houses. And uh, they would have had gas lighting, but not necessarily electric lighting, particularly because they, weren't, they were not wealthy enough to keep up with the latest advances. She would have helped with the cooking, and in many cases done the cooking for fairly simple meals. She'd have done all the laundry. Uh, and it was a pretty monotonous life of um, every day having a new set of uh, new set of duties. Often it would be Monday laundry, Tuesday cleaning, Wednesday ironing, Thursday preparing meals for the for the coming days and making all the bread, Friday collecting up um, any of the sort of requirements for the weekend and this endless endless routine of uh, making sure that everybody in the household was comfortable before she could go to bed. Carrie faced this life of routine, very badly paid, and then her employer tried to seduce her while his wife was away. And for, to a modern sensibility, you think, why on earth didn't she just walk away from this uh, really oppressive life with a quite unpleasant man? And the answer is she had nowhere to go. And she also knew that it's unlikely that even if people believed her, they'd care very much. Because Bert Massey was middle class and because he had the name Massey and he had powerful friends, he would be the one whose story was believed by uh, the press and by his relatives. And she, if she walked away from uh, her life, she wouldn't get a reference, which meant that she would find it very hard to find another job. 
she was incredibly vulnerable. I think what's very interesting about Carrie's period is that it's also the period where it's the birth of feminism. And in the early 20th century, what that meant was women's push for the vote. And alongside that, for a larger, larger voice in public affairs, and also some opportunities to do something other than caring for the home, raising families, and doing sort of good works, volunteer works in the community. And so she, she epitomized for many women the vulnerability of being treated like children in the system, which is what all women at, in every level of society were essentially. They had very few rights. And so she, her cause was taken up by middle-class women who wanted to make sure that, that women, young women as young as Carrie were not exploited as domestic, uh, domestic servants. It was difficult for many of the middle-class women in Toronto and elsewhere to identify with Carrie because this meant that they had to look at their husbands in a new light. Would their husbands do what Bert Massey had tried to do with Carrie? And so there was a sort of ambivalence in how, for example, really interesting and important groups like the National Council of Women dealt with the, the whole story of Cassie, Carrie Davis and the, murder, the Massey murder. But um, it was all part of this larger movement, and particularly with the war on in Europe and men going off to war and suddenly jobs opening up for women in uh, munitions factories and in offices, jobs that the men had taken before they'd left for the war, suddenly women were beginning to reassess their own roles and their own lives and realize that they didn't want to be treated as a sort of secondary to the main, of, main gender, which was men. They wanted equal rights. The story of the Massey murder took a little bit of time to filter out. At first, when a member of the important Massey family had been shot, that was in newspapers in Montreal, Ottawa, New York, and in London. And then interest in the story sort of bubbled along, sort of, but at a very low level outside Toronto. Within Toronto, because there was a big newspaper war going on between two newspapers, it, it continued to be the front page news. But elsewhere, the First World War again occupied the headlines. When the verdict was announced, then everybody paid attention because it was so unexpected. <laughs>